May I say to you, you're not God. You're going to come His way, but He's gracious. He's kind. And God acts with all wisdom and all love and all justice. And if I were God, that's a game you can play sometime. Years ago, they got out a play called Green Pastures. And the one who played God in that, and it probably was blasphemous. I never saw it. But I'm told that the one who played God looked down at the earth and said, "'Look like my children done forgot all about me.'" Well, Adam sinned, and Jacob failed, and God didn't throw him overboard. God wasn't through with him. He took the play and worked it over. And in the book of Jonah, the most heartening word is, "'The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time.'" Jonah failed the first time. And Peter could say to the Lord when he came to him there fishing at the Sea of Galilee, when he'd gone back to fishing, he says, "'Depart from me. I'm a sinful man.'" What he said was, "'Well, why don't you go get somebody else? I failed you so much.'" And the Lord says, "'You're clay on the potter's wheel, and I love you, and I'm going to make a vessel out of you.'" And my didn't he, on the day of Pentecost, he preached the greatest sermon the church has ever had. May I say to you, what we have is the personality of the potter. Now, somebody says, well, you mean to tell me the clay has power? Sure does. The condition of the clay is the determining factor in its ultimate destiny. When it says that Pharaoh hardened his heart, actually, God didn't harden his heart. God brought out that his heart was hard. God made him reveal what he was. There are a lot of people today flying back of false colors. They're hypocritical. And that's one of the reasons I think God permits suffering to come to a great many folk. The sun shines on the clay, and it'll harden it. It'll shine on a cold piece of ice and melt it. And it brings that out. May I say to you, God never hardened Pharaoh's heart again and again. He gave that man an opportunity to turn to him. You know, even the magicians came to Pharaoh and said to him, This is the finger of God. And his servants came to him and said, Let these people go. And even he relented after each plague. But one time he cried out, I've sinned this time. And the Lord is righteous. But he didn't turn to God. <laughs> and what happens? O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. What a picture that we have. Now he shall send them strong delusion in the last days. Who is he sending that to? Those that would not receive the love of the truth. You see, the clay has power. The clay can determine what it's going to be. The Lord Jesus said to his disciples, Will you also go away? They could have. The rich young ruler, he went away sorrowful. And our Lord didn't say we're going to sing 14 more stanzas to see if he won't come forward. He just let him go. <laughs> the clay has power, friends. You can turn your back on him. You can shake your fists at him. You can do that. You can cast yourself upon his mercy and yield to his sweet influence. This is a lesson that Jeremiah got, and he took it to his people, and they resisted it, and they turned their back on God. Then said they, Come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah, verse 18, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his word. They rejected Jeremiah. Why, they said, this man is not saying that which is true at all. The clay has power, and so does the potter, by the way. And in the 19th chapter... Why, the Lord told him, verse 1, Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen bottle, and take of the ancients of the people and the ancients of the priests, and go forth into the valley of the son of Hinnom. He says, Now you go there, and you break that bottle, and then you come back. What's the message? God says, That's what I'm going to do to the house of Israel. 
That's what's going to happen to them. And because he gave this message, this is what happened to the man. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. He stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, verse 14, that is, verse 15 now, "...thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I'll bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I've pronounced against it, because they've hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words." And so we find because of that message, we'll see that they begin now to persecute Jeremiah. These are the last days of that nation. And this man with a broken heart and eyes filled with tears gave the message to the people. What a prophet, but not popular, never popular, not popular today either.